Hello and welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Tracy Shilji. Today we're focusing on Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Moscow visit. He left today for the two-day visit to attend the 16th India-Russia Annual Summit. And expectations are riding high with major agreements expected in defence and nuclear sector. So taking us through what to expect, we have in studio Mr. Alok Bansal, who is the executive editor of SAISA. We also have the editor of Hard News, Mr. Sanjay Kapoor with us, and former ambassador Shiv Shankar Mukherjee. Also joining us from the capital, we've got Professor Anuradha Mitra Chenoy from JNU joining us from the capital. Uh, Professor, if I could start with you, the last summit, uh, which of course took place just, uh, in fact, a, a year ago in December in Delhi, of course, um, that was quite a success. What are your expectations this time around? Well, India-Russia relations are a process. So it isn't really summit to summit, but it is a long tradition, a historic tradition, which has continued uninterrupted for, uh, for almost now decades. And uh, this is part of a process. I'm not undermining its importance. The importance is definitely there. But it is also, I think we mustn't forget that this is a very special strategic relation. It is completely conflict-free. Uh, it's very structural in terms of uh, Indian, uh, the mi Russian military industrial complex is quite uh, engaged with uh, in the Indian defense processes. Uh, the uh, trade has been, um, uh, you know, a bit down, but we can discuss that later. Mm. But uh, the strategic aspects are particularly uh, important. Absolutely. And like you're pointing out, we will talk about the trade angle. Uh, you know, especially with the changing relations, uh, Sanjay, especially of uh, Russia and Turkey at the moment. Can India capitalize on that? We'll talk of that in a bit. But just, uh, you know, just if you could point out what are the expectations this time, or anything that's changed in the past one year, something more that we can look forward to? Yeah, now Russia looks very different from what it looked about a year ago. It's mm. become a more, uh, you can say, confident global player, especially after the interventions in um, Syria. Syria. And uh, it's uh, the manner in which it's gone about taking the fight right into the Islamic State has uh, compelled the Western countries, Europe, even the United States of America to actually uh, talk with Russia, look at how it perceives in terms of uh, reordering the global uh, system. So in a certain way, at the time when the Prime Minister is visiting, there are so many things to discuss, there are so many things to actually uh, that are on offer from the side of the Russians, especially we are talking about S-400, mm. which is a defense system which uh, has been placed in Syria. Uh, which is actually trying to ensure that uh, unwanted uh, intervention from the skies doesn't take place. So India is very keen to buy that. It's a very expensive one. Mm. And the United States is rather unhappy that Russia is offering uh, S-400 to many countries because they realize that once you have a system like that, the edge of U.S. in terms of tactically also gets blunted. Mm. So at a time when PM is going there, there are so many things to discuss. Even when you talk about Turkey, yes. I don't know whether India would be willing to take a position on Turkey because Russians would be trying to get them to endorse a few things of their stand on Turkey. They think their aircraft was brought down uh, you know, in a manner which was totally against international yes. norms. And uh, you talked about trade uh, with the, especially you know, the gap which is being created by tr Turkey. I'm not very sure how soon India can fill that. Mm. Because they're mostly dealing with perishable goods and stuff which is, has to be supplied on a regular basis. Yeah. But I'm sure it's a great opportunity and I think Prime Minister Modi recognizes it. He's actually extolled the relationship that India has with Russia. Talked very in very warm tones uh, when he was giving an interview. Mm. So in a way, it's a very, very important trip. And I think India would be expected to take a position on Syria. It re maybe if they can, he can sidestep. Uh, may have to talk about uh, the aircrafts which are down of the Russians in uh, Sharm al Sheikh. Yes. So there are a lot of issues. All right. Uh, Mr. Mukherjee, uh, you know, not just what India expects from Russia, anything that Russia too is looking at, uh, you know, to India for? Certainly. Firstly, I'd like to endorse uh, what my co panelist said just now. This is an exceptionally important visit. Uh, as was said, it is very important from a complete strategic point of view and also uh, in terms of specific items of substance. Mm. Uh, it's not just the S-400, I mean, the, the, there, are other things the also, yes. there are other things also. The attack helicopter that we are negotiating is probably going to be the very first big ticket defense mm. item that is part of the Make in India program. Uh, and that's very likely to come through from what I heard our uh, ambassador there, Mr. Raghavan, saying. Uh, in, so the the... 
even greater, I think, importance of the visit apart from what it will lead to uh, is the 16th summit. We have an annual summit with, this, with Russia. Yes. Is the fact that there is a perception, uh, not uh, perhaps so much shared by insiders and government, but outside those who, who watch India's foreign policy, uh, whether it's politicians or journalists or analysts and so on, and in the outside world as well, I find, there's a perception that the, the Russia post-Soviet Union has over the last few years somewhat fallen off the radar mm. uh, in terms of India's priorities. And that I don't think, firstly, I don't think that's really true. It's, it's, by, it, it's in a negative sense created by the media attention given in India to developments that India has with the West, with, yeah. with the developed world. Yeah. And that's unfortunate because the media, I mean, for instance, there's an army of journalists representing Indian media in Washington. There's hardly anybody mm -hmm. in Moscow. Mm. Uh, so, you know, uh, and there are other reasons as well. So, I think Prime Minister Modi's visit of, is, is, as the others said, extremely important by itself. Mm. Uh, Russia will look to India. Russia uh, is, is part of regional organizations such as BRICS. But more than that, Russia, it is abundantly clear under Putin, wants to re-establish its position in the world, not as a superpower that the Soviet Union was, but certainly as a power uh, that is not going to take second place in a multipolar world. Yeah. Putin remains probably the most popular Russian leader ever. By some polls, even more popular than what Lenin used to be in his time. Mm. So we are dealing with a man firmly in command. We're dealing with a Russia, as a Professor said, uh, with, with whom we have a historic strategic relationship. Yes. Where the friendship has been tried and tested. Yeah. We, uh, one of the highest priorities that India has is defense preparedness. And, and you know, with so much talk about uh, the gaps in our Army and Air Force and Navy, particularly the Navy, which is still about 90% dependent on the Soviet Union for its uh, equipment and maintenance. Russia, no. So giving all, taking all that into perspective, I mean, it's, it, it, it's absolutely clear that this is an exceptionally important visit in terms of uh, what will happen in the defense area, in the nuclear area, where we are already decided to give two more uh, areas for, for nuclear reactors in Andhra Pradesh yeah, to yeah. Russia. Yeah. Uh, defense area, of course, it goes without saying. Uh, and uh, don't forget, even in a, in a, in a very long-term strategic sense, let me just point out one example. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, you had a whole number, a, a, a number of Central Asian republics that came into being. And none of them have anything but very friendly relations with India, simply because all of them had been conditioned over decades to look at India through the Soviet prism, yeah. which was an extremely friendly prism. Mm. So, you know, we, we, we have to nurture this relationship. We, uh, we are, I know we are doing it, but yeah. we, must e we must tackle not just the, the substance, but the perception as well. Keep at it and not take it for granted. Absolutely. Yes, yeah. Mr. Bansal, anything specific that you're looking at as far See, as you know? as far as Indo-Russian relations are concerned, security and defense ties have been the key to Indo-Russian relationship. In fact, uh, for decades, Soviet Union and subsequently Russia has been the largest source for Indian defense imports. In recent past, the US had actually taken the number one position. So it had created a perceptional difference. There were certain perceptions that uh, India-Russian ties have taken a back seat. Mm. I think that needs to be changed because as far as Prime Minister Modi's Make in India campaign is concerned, which is primarily focused on defense uh, technology coming into India and defense production into India. We've already have a successful model of BrahMos missiles, mm. and that is likely to be replicated in the case of Kamo 226T uh, uh, helicopters, which 200 of them we are hoping to uh, manufacture in India. Then fifth generation fighter aircraft is being talked. Uh, there were certain perceptional differences, but again, an advanced version of Sukhoi aircraft is being offered to India. And if that comes through, I think Prime Minister Modi's Make in India, which is actually key to generating employment, yeah. key to absorbing technology, would actually see fruition. Mm -hmm. And I think with that sort of a thing, with this defense preparedness coming into India, I think you will see trade also skyrocketing. And uh, in the recent past, there have been certain apprehensions on account of Russian supplies of attack helicopters to Pakistan as well. I think that needs to be assuaged. Uh, at the same time, I think India and Russia have similar views as far as Syria, IS and other countries are concerned. Mm. India, like Russia, 
has been supportive of Bashar al-Assad's uh, regime and has not taken the US or the Western stance of uh, replacing the regime. So I think by and large there is congruence as far as US, uh, so Russia and India are concerned on most global issues. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, this enables India to take its relationship with Russia, Russia to a new height. There are, another very important factor is that Russia is one of the few countries which in Indian popular perception is rated very high. I think if you talk to public at large, mm. they have very favorable opinion of Russia, probably from 71, uh, because what happened in 71. Even now, despite the yeah, economy despite the Soviet Union India having US, disintegrated, yeah. the people still talk of Russian veto without talking of Soviet veto. The uninformed, when you go to the rural areas or you go to Mofsil town, mm. people talk of Russia as a time-tested friend which stood by India. Mm. Now, that is the perception. So, as a result, when you talk to people by and large, people have a good opinion of Russia. And I think any political leader, it's far easier for him or her to ride over this wave of popular uh, approval for good relations with Russia. All right. So not just India and Russia also, Sanjay, you know, it, this is also, as, as was pointed out, the BRICS bloc in itself emergence, the emergence of it, the importance that is gaining year by year. Um, is this also a relationship, India-Russia, is also a relationship that other world powers are looking at? Is it a relationship the U.S. also looks at? Not just BRICS, but also the Shanghai cooperation. That's true. That's which is, true. I think, yes. far more significant in mm. many ways. So, you know, this multipolarity which has been created, in which India is a major partner with Russia and China, mm. uh, I think creates a certain amount of apprehension in the minds of the Western bloc. It's, uh, though, you know, it has not really come to its full potential in many ways, but there is so much that is happening in the world. I mean, grow, growing proximity between Russia and China, how they are dealing with each other, the gas deal between Russia and China. Yes. And then you also have Chinese, um, um, you know, uh, one belt, one road. So, you know, there are a number of variables that have come into play in which Russia is a, you know, key player. And Russian uh, technology and Russian innovation in a certain way is respected all over the world. And that provides a certain kind of edge to China. So, you know, if you see that from the, the prism of multipolarity, uh, Russia is beginning to rise once again. And India has, in the last few years, as Ambassador has said, you know, uh, been creating an impression that it's not really close to it. I mean, mm. there's a certain kind of perception. Mm. And I think Russians also have been feeling a certain amount of, you know, in a certain way, being ignored. They think that despite the old ties, despite historical relations, we haven't really invested diplomatically as much as we should have uh, in the last few years. And uh, this recent relationship, uh, these overtures with uh, Pakistan has been making or Russia has been responding also, they have also created an impression that uh, uh, Russia in a certain way wants to leverage its new relations with Pakistan to get a better deal with India. I mean, some kind of, uh, you know, Minaj Troy in a certain way mm. to show that, you know, India should, you know, look at Russia more carefully, more closely than what it has been doing. and. Uh, all these things, in a certain way, well, brings it, bring in the complexity which is required to take this relationship far more seriously than it has been in the last 10 years. Mm. And I said as, as earlier, you know, when uh, President Putin is, looks a very transformed person, yeah. and so does Russia. Mm. And uh, they have been able to unveil or unpack all the goodies that they have yeah. in terms of hardware, in terms of technology, in terms of those superior systems that, you know, people had actually begun to ignore. I mean, I remember Western media used to talk about uh, Russian bombs as dumb bombs, as something that they can't really decide where they mm. will drop. So, you know, they, they have been able to show they can also do precession uh, bombing. Yeah. They have the hardware, they have the skills to do it. So when Prime Minister is going there and he's talked about Russia being a permanent partner and he's talked about how they can actually work together, and he's also said it's a time-tested friend. Yeah. And suddenly now you have, uh, you know, so many things that Russia is offering. And India is willing to cut the check and buy some of the some of that, and also bring in technology in India to you know give meaning to make an India program. Yeah, absolutely. Defense and the nuclear sector is definitely uh, you know something that is uh, hoping a lot from this particular visit. But Professor Chinoy, uh, you know, um, one thing that of course leaves much desired, at least is as far as economic trade is concerned between the countries, especially the past few. Uh, decades, if you could even say, it has seen a lull of sorts. What could be the reason for that? And do we see, uh, you know, a jump in that, a, a, a thrust uh, towards it in the coming years? 
look at one stage uh, india russia trade of uh, consumer goods etc was at its peak uh, during the soviet period and there was a rupee rub ruble trade when india had foreign exchange crisis anyway that was over and then there was a period of problems because of the fall of the ruble the destabilization of russian banks etc that phase is over and i see the current conjuncture as a historic opportunity to rebuild india russia trade because one R russia has sanctions imposed on it from the west so they are alienated from the west they don't want the people also if of russia they are looking again towards india etc second with turkey which used to import so many of their consumables putin is putting a stop to that because of the decline in R russian turkish relations so now the floodgates can be opened for india especially with uh, prime ministers uh, you know uh, focus on trade the fact that india's trade with the uh, europe etc has shown a decline this is a historic opportunity for indian business for indian traders yes defense etc is stable but since there was a decline in trade this is a time where india can really flood the russian markets also there's a bit of disillusionment with chinese goods china has a trade with uh, russia of 60 billion dollars a year sometimes even more hmm. and they are the ones who have taken advantage of this opening i believe india can do so they have the capacity and also there's a russian uh you know the currency has stabilized they are part of brics they would be interested in uh, supporting many of india's infrastructure projects uh their their capitalist class has uh, got maturity uh, putin controls them very well and i last time uh, president putin was here i think there was good a uh, good relationship between the president and our prime minister and i think this would be taken forward so it's a huge opportunity which can be taken both by our government our citizens they have to broaden the relationship make it flexible allow people to people academic medical you know the pharmaceutical sector of india was huge over there and it declined i think it can develop again hmm. uh, similarly mineral ongc videsh which already has invested in sakal in 1 and 2 there are other um, kind of fields in which so the potential is huge and i think a lot depends on prime minister and the team which has gone absolutely and uh, just talking about the modi putin relationship uh, you know mr mokerji um it, it's always interesting to see how prime minister modi has created these uh, you know friendships with various leaders right. what is the kind of bonhomie that we see with uh, president putin well from all accounts it is excellent mm -hmm. uh, these are two uh, leaders of two very large and important countries uh, who are uh, seen as being in um well in full command uh, of of their countries i mean in a very democratic india uh, our prime minister commands a majority in parliament uh, regardless of the problems in the rajya sabha in terms yes. of foreign policy initiatives he's seen as a person who can uh, make promises and deliver on them uh, and and putin of course very much so and i think the chemistry between them by all accounts is is very good indeed I would endorse everything professor said about the opportunities we have and making good on them. Mm. Uh, and here the private sector must play its part because this the Soviet economy, the Russian economy, sorry, yes. is no longer totally state driven. Mm. I mean there are a huge number of private players, not just the visible billionaires but a whole lot of others. And it's up to our private sector uh, to take advantage of uh, of a market where where the uh, the political door opening is already there. Mm. and uh, i would blame the private sector if if uh, they didn't show the the dynamism that is required for this uh, i do believe and i've seen this first hand that uh, quite often our private sector depends on our government uh, uh, you know handing across contracts to them on a platter which is not going to happen but there's an enormous amount pharma is is one area information technology is another area uh defense alone can boost trade figures i mean the target is to convert the 10 billion dollar trade today to 30 billion dollars yes that's what the prime minister that that's what the joint statement said i mean mm. the, the the talks that have mm. been preparatory talks that have been held 
So, uh, politically, uh, in terms of the, 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 the understanding that exists between the top leadership, everything is a plus. Mm. Uh, my only apprehension is, and, and uh, I say this without, I think, fear of contradiction, that even in the last 18 months or so, uh, these very, very successful visits that our Prime Minister has made, and even earlier in the previous regimes, yeah. Uh, where we fall down on is uh, the bonhomie, the oppor opportunities that are created through these, uh, the, the, these uh, political initiatives yes. is not really followed, upon, uh, followed up upon and, and, and uh, implemented on the ground. Mm. The opportunities are sometimes just let go. That, I hope, is not going to happen. All right. Last word, Mr. Bansal, anything that you would like to add and especially uh, talking about you know the dynamics of the relationship between India and Russia at the moment currently and what is it that we can achieve in the coming years? See both the leaders are perceived as strong leaders and yeah. I think that creates a natural chemistry. There yeah. is of course the problem of linguistic barriers uh, and I think uh, conversation may not be that smooth as it is with English speaking uh, mm -hmm. heads of states or something like that. But I think in today's day and age with the translations and all, I think that uh, issue has been resolved to a very great extent. But Prime Minister Modi's key policy of make in India can only fructify with Soviet, uh, sorry, with the Russian Russia. help. And I think uh, till now, Prime Minister, despite his numerous visits to the West, has not been able to get a big ticket uh, defense uh, equipment uh, to come mm -hmm. and start manufacturing in India mm -hmm. under the make in India project. I think uh, from what I am getting an input, at least one or two deals are likely to be signed during Prime Minister's visit, mm. which will see one or two big ticket defense production, uh, joint production units being set up in India. Right. We have already have a successful model of Brahmos, yeah. which can be easily exported to third countries. As of now, Russia had been putting some restrictions. But I think once this issue is resolved, we could make India a defense exporting hub also. Because this huge numbers that we import gives us enormous leverage to produce it. And then maybe once the numbers actually economy of scale is achieved, you could also become an attractive hub for export. Mm -hmm. As far as trade is concerned, I think rupee ruble, uh, ruble trade uh, professor has already talked of. But uh, please understand because of sanctions, I think uh, there is a huge opportunities. Yeah. And from Indian investment in oil and gas industry, because Russia still is the largest producer of oil and gas has got huge reserves, mm -hmm. gas reserves are the largest and we can probably, uh, I think Indian private sector would like to tap into it, would like to join many of them and probably have collaborative ventures. Mm -hmm. So that I think we could take Indian economy to a greater heights, greater right. investment, greater inputs. All right. All in all, it's of course a positive trip. Everyone's looking forward to a lot. and. Uh, like we pointed out, India-Russia relations, there are many facets to it. We could go on talking, but that's about the time I have now on The Big Picture. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining me. Also, Professor, thank you so much for joining us here on The Big Picture. We'll be back again tomorrow with another topic. Do stay with us.